Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and I've got a couple of my tubs here. I got this uh, African Nightcrawler tub, which some people say aren't even African Nightcrawlers. So maybe we'll take a closer look in here today when we check this one out. And then there's the European Nightcrawlers here on the Vermi Bag Mini. It's been six days since we last checked in on these and we didn't even feed in here last time, six days ago. We just looked around. It's actually been 13 days since I last fed this bin because I'm giving this bin time for the worms to really break down all the remaining food. That includes not only the feeding they received 13 days ago, but all the other scraps of bedding, food, anything else that might be still in here. So we're going to check out how that's progressing. And then in here, in the European Nightcrawler bag, it was only six days ago that we fed, but it was only uh, maybe a handful of watermelon, which I would have to guess has probably been gobbled up already by now. And it wasn't a very large feeding either. So it seemed like a sensible um, point in time to come back in here, give these guys a little bit more food, and to also to get a sense of how this one's progressing towards that stage of uh, hopefully having a tub of castings only with very little, if any, scraps of food and bedding and stuff left over. So that hopefully the process of trying to depopulate this material of worms so that the material can be harvested and the worms can move on to some new mission and um, start a new composting job in a different container. Something a little bit larger this time. So why don't we begin by feeding down in here. So the feeding as you can see is a good wide assortment of different things. There's a bunch of coffee here in its filter, some Brussels sprout leaves. Um, that's a mango seed over there you see cut in half uh, as well as some of the mango skin and watermelon. Oh, I believe there's a banana peel in there too. So that should make for a pretty nice meal for these guys. Just lifting off this piece of cardboard here that has that diatomaceous earth powder on it. Trying to help reduce the number of flying insects, which might actually be finally working or might be happening because of some other reason. I don't know why, but thank goodness I'm seeing far fewer flying insects now than I had in the past. It's always kind of cool checking in on these guys when you first I'll open the container and they're out here trying to take advantage of some of the moisture that collects on the surface. And get a view of some of these nice large worms, night crawlers, European night crawlers. I figured I'd try to take a closer look at a couple of them just so maybe we can do a little comparison because when we check in on my African night crawlers, I'm going to be trying to see if I can spot some of the telltale signs of what um, really sets a African nightcrawler apart from uh, other types of worms. They've got like a purplish sheen to them and a couple other characteristics, kind of a flat body over that bulge even, I think is what some people had described some of the basic telltales as. So I'm definitely curious in seeing what the story is. I'll also be curious to see how those rings of corn cob that I had taken, this was a corn cob that I had sliced into little rings like this in the hopes that it would help the material break down more quickly. And I'm sure it's helping a lot, but since it is corn cobs, I don't think it's gonna cause them to vanish immediately. Here's a mango seed, which was similarly to the one that we're going to be feeding now, was cut. This one was cut in two places. The one we're feeding today was just cut in one place. Oops. <laughs> see a bunch of worms hanging out inside of it. But as far as the last feeding goes that we put in here, the, um, the watermelon rinds, I don't see any signs of them. I would think some sort of a soft, sweet food item like that would just vanish immediately. So it's not too surprising. But this is kind of cool to actually see good numbers of worms hanging out here as we poke around down in the feeding zone. Because normally we don't see that many of these worms in this bin. They just seem to be scattered all around the bin. But now maybe I just got into a good section where there's a lot of them hanging out. So it is kind of a nice change of pace to see a whole bunch of these European nightcrawlers all hanging out together when we pick up a nice 
large chunk of material out of the bin. I guess here too is another example of just a, a whole bunch of worms hanging out together in one spot. Ooh, it's ticklish. One of them is squirming in between my fingers. <laughs> a little ticklish there. So um, it makes me wonder if the numbers of worms in this container is finally starting to increase. And it could be. There's certainly been enough time for this population of euros to grow in numbers. That's pretty cool too. The mango seed, when you crack it open, you can see whoops, a whole bunch of worms hanging out inside of it. This definitely helps a lot to be able to open up one of those things to give the, the worms access to the inside. All right, I'm bothering these little guys. They're starting to climb up the walls because they're not digging my intrusion here. So let's get these guys fed and move on. I have this bag of shredded paper. And I figured let me just use these last few little scraps of it during this feeding just so I can be rid of that as well. There's a little bit of carbon to go hand in hand with the food that they're given is always a good thing. A little bit of bedding material that's carbon based to help balance out the nitrogen rich food that they're getting and this is a good portion too that they're receiving here way more than I gave them uh, six days ago so I might not have to come back as quickly this time as I felt like I had to this time but I did watch the video from last time we fed these guys and it did seem like the um, the feeding they received last time was not not very substantial, so it did seem realistic to get in here and feed them again. So let's just dump in whatever they've been give, given this week. And we can spread it out a little bit. Here too, the coffee filter is another carbon source. And then any, any of these larger food scraps that we encountered on the way in. We'll just get them back down into the hole here. A couple mango seeds, some of these hacked up corn cob bits. And it makes me wonder what to expect once we get into the, uh, the other bin because that bin was also fed with these chopped up corn cob chunks. And as much as I'd like to see that bin get to the finish line so we can harvest the castings, um, I'm wondering if the addition of corn cob into that bin could ultimately lead to um, an excessive amount of time needed to, you know, break that down. Because as much as you would think that worms would go bananas over, you know, corn cob, it does take forever sometimes for them to eat it up. Although that's kind of a good sign right there that it's this crumbly and that easy to break up after less than two weeks of time. So um, hopefully we'll see some good progress on the corn cob bits once we get into the uh, the African nightcrawler tub. All right, let's get this thing covered up and move on to the other bin. Since it is daytime right now, we're not seeing any worms hanging out here on top of this piece of paper, but all this castings material is clear evidence that they do come up here. And sometimes when I come down here early in the morning before the sun starts to really stream into my wormery and it starts to become really bright down here, I still see some worms underneath that plastic coming up to kind of bask in the, the moisture that collects as a result of the plastic being there. And it's interesting to see how the paper itself is now being eventually broken down by the worms too. Maybe that's a good sign too. Maybe that just shows that the food supply is dwindling and that they're actually turning to this large piece of carbon rich paper to feed on. Here's just some more scraps of that same stuff. But look at that, really nice castings spread out all across the top of this container. And I think maybe we'll just start poking around down here. Maybe we'll go down the middle this time just so we can see what we can find 
in terms of remnants of that last feeding of corn cob bits that were thrown in here. I mean, I have a feeling we're going to find much like what we just saw in the European Nightcrawler vermi bag. I mean, that is unless the African Nightcrawlers, for whatever reason, are able to break it down more quickly. And, I mean, here, I'm going to just hold one up here as an example. Definitely appears to be darker in color than the uh, the worms we just saw in the uh, in the vermi bag. I mean, most people will refer to the um, the color of these as sort of an iridescent purple color, and that definitely seems to coincide with what we're seeing here on this little guy. And then even that protrusion that you see on a worm's body, the clitellum is very flush with the rest of the body on this worm. So based on what I've been researching over the past week or, you know, past couple weeks since the topic has been coming up, people commenting on what they're seeing in this container, I would have to guess that at least these couple worms here, they do appear to be African night crawlers, but maybe it's a mix. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just wrong. But I have been mentioning in my comments, or at least my replies to people's comments, that I would try to take a closer look at some of these worms to see if we can do a positive identification on these to see if we can confirm that they are African night crawlers, or maybe they're something different. And I guess if I see one that doesn't seem to be consistent with the description I provided earlier, we'll look at them more closely too. Because here you've got that obviously protruding clitellum on this one and the color of this one is not quite as dark. So I could see this one maybe not being an African night crawler, but the first two that we took a closer look at did seem to me like they were. So maybe it is just a mix, you know, a combination of different worm types. So if you're one of those people that can really, you know, identify one of these worms by type just from looking at them that way. I'd love to hear people's opinions on what they think they're seeing here. So let's try to probe through this material to see what we can come up with. This I believe is a chunk of the um, corn cob, at least one of those rings. You can see it doesn't break apart very easily yet, so it's pretty intact. But each piece was a complete ring so that, that piece being only a half of a ring makes me wonder if they could have actually chewed it down into two pieces. Here too we've got worms within the middle section of it. They always do seem to enjoy the middle part of a corn cob before they start eating any, rest, any of the rest of the corn cob. And here's another one. The worm hanging out right in the middle of it, right through the center like a donut. So I guess these corn cob bits are going to take a little bit of time. I, I guess if I really felt like I wanted to beeline it to the finish line, I could always use the old sifting method and stuff like this would just get caught in the sifter. So it wouldn't be the end of the world if I decided I was convinced that it was time to harvest the castings from this container Oops. and get the worms relocated into a different location to get them working on a different batch of fresh materials. But that is a good sign that every one of these that we look at, I always see a little worm squirming right in the center of it, poking itself through the middle, gobbling up the innards of each ring of corn cob. And then once it's hollowed out, it'll just be a matter of time till they proceed to the rest of the uh, material that makes up the corn cob. And then you find pieces like this one that just don't seem like they've come very far at all. Oh, well, I could be mistaken. There's a little itsy bitsy worm in there <laughs> working it for us. So whatever, every little bit helps. But as far as food bits are concerned in this bin, I don't think there's going to be much of anything else. I'm pretty sure that we had um, fed only these corn cobs, or maybe that was combined with some other sort of food at that time, something that would have probably broken down by now. I don't know if that's this is that same piece of 
corn cob ring that was broken in half. Oh no, here it is, here's another half. Maybe these are two halves of the same piece. But as you saw, most of the pieces that we've stumbled on are still a complete ring. And I'm not going to try breaking them apart. If they break, then they break. But I'm going to try to let them stay whole so that we can just use their natural deterioration as an indicator of how we're progressing here. The material itself, I've been covering with plastic to try to not allow moisture to escape. And I also want the moisture level in all areas of the bin to remain somewhat high because I'd like for the worms to feel really comfortable going to all reaches of the bin to you know, work down any remaining scraps of food anywhere in the bin that they might want to venture to, to find it. But I think when you go out to these outer edges of the bin, I think the only things you're going to really find out here are just, eh, well, there we go, here's a <laughs> corn cob ring. But other than that, you'll have to um, agree with me when I say that this castings material looks really nice. It's got a great crumbly texture to it. It flakes away readily, breaks up in your hand. It's not overly damp or anything like that. And since I'm not adding any moisture going forward, I think keeping that plastic on makes good sense just to retain the moisture level that's in here now and not allow it to um, dry out and uh, remain nice and comfortable for the worms to, to be in until such a time that they finish breaking down all this stuff and we can harvest the castings and relocate the worms. All right, I figure as long as I'm in here, I did not really probe around to this degree last time we were in here about six days ago. I was trying to really limit the amount that I agitate the material for whatever reason. I think I was just worried about bringing a lot of the food items up to the top surface. I wanted it to remain all submerged below the surface. But I think we could see to it that any food items that we've picked out we're going to just be able to make sure that they're down underneath the surface when we pack things up here so I'm not too worried about probing around and examining things but you could see I don't even know, I don't remember how many corn cobs I sliced up this way but you could see there's a good number of them in here I've already stacked up a couple dozen of them over here or what appears to be a couple dozen and I'm sure there's plenty more throughout the bin if you keep looking Almost each of them has a worm hanging out of the middle of it. <laughs> so cool. All right. So I think I'd like to also take a peek at how things look right underneath over here, where we've been stacking up all the food bits that we've stumbled on. So really carefully, without pouring the material out over the edge, I'm going to try to stack it up a little bit. Here again. I don't know, just these really dark colored worms with the very, very flush looking clitellum, this iridescent purple. I'm pretty sure that these are African night crawlers. And even if not all of them are, it is good to know that I've got at least a few. And I can't see myself separating them or picking them out or trying to make sure that I'm left with only African night crawlers. If it's gonna be a mix of different types of worms in this bin, then so be it, it's not the end of the world. But I would definitely like to hear what people think, you know. Some of these lighter colored worms, you know. My assumption is that if they're not African night crawlers, that they're still a night crawler, that they're still maybe the European night crawlers. But I really don't know, you know. I'm not an expert at differentiating one worm type from the other. Maybe someday I'll get the hang of it, but I've never really gotten that in detail looking at worms individually that way just more recently i've actually tried to learn a little bit more about how to distinguish one type from the other i, I did actually receive a link from somebody after my last video when we checked in on these guys that did um, provide some useful insights to help me distinguish one type from the other so that was really helpful See here too, as we poke down a little bit deeper where the concentrations of food were, it's kind of cool to see a, a bunch of worms all hanging out down there together, picking away at the food that they've been given. I figured I'd open up a nice crevice down here 
and we would just go ahead and dump all of these bits we just located and create sort of a hot spot. Maybe we'll come back in here in another week or so to see how this stuff is progressing and maybe we'll find a whole bunch of worms hanging out down the middle working their way through that stuff. Okay. I'm just curious as long as we've been poking around a little bit more thoroughly now how things look down on this side. Very much the same as we saw on the other side. Really nice consistency of uh, material. Nice and flaky, pretty heavily populated with worms throughout. Doing their thing. And I know that when I originally started out, whatever number of worms it was that this started with, I don't know what number of worms it actually was, but I believe it was estimated to be 100 cocoons that this population started out as. And you would have to admit that this is well beyond whatever it is that would emerge out of 100 worm cocoons. So it's kind of cool to also see that these worms have been breeding and... Um, mating and propagating their numbers. So this is a pretty um, densely populated bin, which is a good thing to see as well. Definitely makes sense to want to get these guys relocated into a larger container where they can roam free and spread out and continue to increase their numbers. All right, I'm gonna start spreading things out here, try to level things off. And I'm sure once we come back in here next time, we're not gonna see all this bumpy, cratery stuff. We're gonna probably see a nice thin coating of fresh castings deposited across the whole top surface. And I wonder how that piece of paper is gonna fare after another week of worms coming up to chow on it. I think it's gonna continue to break down rapidly at this point because it's just riddled with holes. But that's also interesting to observe how it deteriorates over time because last week it definitely did not look like that yet. So let's get this thing covered back up again, sort of, <laughs> as best as we can with this tattered piece of paper. And then restore this piece of plastic cover them up with. So that was kind of fun. I was hoping that uh, I'd be able to spend a little bit of time and take a closer look at these worms and try to educate myself on what it is that actually populates this bin because I've been becoming you know kind of skeptical about whether or not I've even got African night crawlers in here but I'm starting to think that I do even if it's not all African night crawlers I'm pretty sure that it's at least partially African night crawlers. So I'd love to hear what people think. Um, put your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think in terms of what types of worms you think these are. If they are African night crawlers or if they're not, what do you think they are? I look forward to reading everyone's comments. So that's it for today, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give me a quick thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. Also consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that button down there. Ring the bell too, as long as you're down there, and um, become a subscriber. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.